there are two times in the year when you can easily stand an egg on end. No trick photography. Nothing behind it. This is one of those times of the year. Happy autumnal equinox, folks. Equinox, folks. Hey, what's going on, fish heads? I didn't know you guys were out there. Today's Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Jen Kravasi, Jekyll Bates. It's the first day of fall, and it is the last day, the very last day. You guys are going to see me do any kind of editing or video construction from this machine. I recently had a desktop crash, which set me back, back to this unit. This laptop is not equipped to handle what I've been giving it. I've been throwing everything at it because I'm leaps and bounds beyond where I used to be in editing. Um, I hope you guys are noticing. I'm putting a lot more effort into the videos because I really want to deliver quality product to you guys. Um, but in order to do that, we got to say goodbye to old Red. Red has been faithful to me for over three years, and Red is going to be going to a very good home to underprivileged folks that... Um, that otherwise may not get laptops. So I'm completely gutting this one out today. I apologize on the lack of uploads lately. Um, it, it's been frustrating. I'm trying to run Adobe Creative Cloud and Cyberlink and all the stuff that I try to run on this on a day-to-day -day basis is just, I'm not able to do the volume of what I need to do in the time frame I need to do it and still get over to the spray bench over here and get your stuff done. So we're getting a, we're getting a good <laughs> I'm really excited about what we're getting. We're getting a really good laptop and a new desktop. It's coming today. So today we're going to do a quick update. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a view as far as what's coming down the road. Hopefully within the next year, you're going to be looking at Jen Carvassi in a brand new studio because that's in the works as well. So I'm really stoked about that. Um, thanks for supporting the channel. I've been on the air in YouTube since 2012, but I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, it's taken a long time. It's taken a lot of hard work and it's taken you guys believing in my product as well. So thank you guys for that. I really appreciate your patronage. I appreciate your subscribing to the channel. So um, before you leave today, if you guys are new to Jen Kravatsi, Jekyll Bates, and you want to kind of get a taste, a little spice, a little flavor as far as what I give, by all means, take a look at the trailers, take a look at the videos, and let's get into today's shop update now i promise you guys q's and a's i've got some questions that uh, you guys have sent in you sent in a bunch of questions so thank you very much i've gotten them in a bunch of different formats through the community area and in youtube i've gotten them in through the videos in youtube and i also got them in my messenger so you guys flooded me with questions and i'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as i can show you a few new pieces so let's get into it moving right along let's go into the showcase portion of the video I'm going to start with this little guy right here. Now, this is from Phantom Lures, and one of the coolest things about Phantom Lures is that they have recognized the burning desire, the burning need for clear blank baits in their lineup. So they have uh, presented to the airbrushing community and custom designers out there a solution, and it's a great solution. So some of their product line includes clear blanks. Now, they're not the only ones to do this, but they are some of the forerunners in the industry that are doing this for airbrushers, such as myself and all you guys out there. So go check out Phantom Lures. I'll link them below in the description as well. And big shout out to Nick Peters. He was kind enough to send me along a couple of samples of these, and I also painted him up. Now, he's a, he's a real good airbrush artist in his own right. He also targets the clients that are the toothy critter anglers um but uh, it was an honor to paint for him and check out nicholas peters he's also a really good airbrush artist as well but thank you nick for sending me a couple of samples of these and thanks for the clear boxes that you were able to send along awesome 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 couldn't have come at a better time because i'm still waiting on a mondo shipment from overseas that has not gotten in yet so thanks for helping me uh be able to ship my merchandise out to my customers but this is just a simple three color design. Now the one thing that I did different on this, there's no white primer on the base, it's fluorescent blue. 
and then I layered the white and black over top of it. It's a three color simple pattern with layered design. Just a little bit of splash of purple on the front and on the tail and that's it. The eyes are glass so you want to be careful not bounce these off the rocks. I would troll this and this is uh, two and three quarter inches just on the body of the, the bait itself. The bill is uh, another inch and a half. So full, full on this is just shy of four inches total. It's going to run you around nine, ten feet, so mid going towards the deeper end of the spectrum for small flat side baits such as this. A um, lot of fun, great wobble. This, these guys have got great action. They're not, uh, they're not skimpy. They're a fantastic company, great bait up out of Minnesota. So go check them out. Phantom Lures, love it. This is the Walleye Bitterbug. Next up, it's this little Strike King 1.5. It's a KVD. It's a reclaimed and it's got a really cool little story on it. Now, I was fishing at Lake Norfolk, which is Bull Shoals' sister lake. The only thing separating Bull Shoals and Lake Norfolk is a little town called Mountain Home. If you've ever been there, you would remember it. It's a beautiful town, beautiful mountain home town, basically. I'm sure that's how it's got its name. Blinding flash of the obvious there, Jennifer, but hey. No, this is, uh, uh, there was a young man that was fishing on the bank. And he had this tied onto a spinning reel and rod. This was the only bait that he had. And he'd, uh, he'd lost a bunch of stuff and, and gear. He was fishing this, and it was, folks, it was a mess. It had uh, one hook left on it, one treble hook that had two tines instead of three that was all rusted out. The split rings were rusted out. The, the bill was, well, the bill is still the same. Obviously, this is a reclaimed bait. But it float tested well, it, uh, it swam well, so I went ahead and decided to repaint it. But going back to last year, that's all he had to fish with. So I was, you know, hey, let's help the kids out. Let's, you always want to promote youth angling and uh, furthering our sport. So I made him a trade. I, made, I traded him a few Jekyll baits for this. And he, I, don't, I think I confused him. He's like, why would you? Hey, it's, it's all about giving, giving it back. So I painted this up last night. It's a little, I, it, the cool thing about this, this is all that Createx bloodline. So there's uh, the, the blood red, the ochre yellow, the hematoma color, uh, that, that real nasty green, viral green. Um, cool. Next up is that Lone Star Lipless. Now this is a Scheltz bait. It's uh, kind of weighs in right around a half an ounce, maybe a little bit heavier with the gear on it. Uh, it's got some weight. It's got a great rip, great flutter. I'm, I'm happy with this bait. I've, I've never had a complaint out of it. And I wanted to kind of pay homage to Texas. Uh, they've been going through a lot with the, with the last hurricane that went through there and their torrential flooding. So it's a neighboring state of Arkansas is down in the southwest corner. Little patches attached. So this one's for you, Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Two left to go. This one really <laughs> this is a great pattern so this is an ozark trails and there's not a whole lot that i've done it already came pre-foiled like this uh, i'm calling it the bedazzled craw but i probably could have gotten away calling it the disco craw there's just tons of flash and pop on this bait and i love it i absolutely love it it's great for the fall this time of the year uh, ozark trails puts out a very good lipless that reacts and swims almost identically to those old, well, Booyah owns the company now, but those old Excaliburs. So the, the XR50s and 75s, this behaves very much like that. But just a cool, all, you want to talk about a holographic image, you can almost see that pattern moving on this bait. So just a lot of fun making this pattern. All right. Last but certainly not least, this little 1.5 deal. This is a Max Lore repaint. Max Lore is, well, to, let's be honest, it's uh, the 1.5 blank that we all have. But it was a mystery tackle box. Um, got it in my May or June, I want to say. This is the last month that I ordered from them. It, they were all. Okay, so here's the thing. I, you know, I've been, this is like my third take, and I'm trying to not step on toes because I don't want to because they offer a phenomenal product all those places do however um, as as a lure painter I have a, a struggle let's just say I struggle 
with spending $26 a month on a Pro Box, which has recently become mostly Ketchco products, um, where I can get the blanks the same and, and customize them myself. It's not that they don't put out a phenomenal product. They do. It's not that they're using substandard products. They're not. Uh, they're using the same caliber of lures that you and I repaint. And I used to love getting Mystery Tackle Box because they had so many cool, like you'd get Lunker Hunt, you would get Strike Kings, you'd get Berkeleys, you'd get all manner of things. And it was all the brand names because they didn't have their own line yet. And there's nothing wrong with them having their own line. But, uh, you know, they, they send you the little survey in the mail, you know, your email as to why you've stopped subscribing to them. And it's nothing bad. It's just for myself, if I'm going to spend $26 then I want it to be on stuff that I can't get myself, you know, stuff like he head and baits and, you know, just the, the myriad of stuff that you Zuri's, the stuff that I can't get, that I could get at a really cool monthly price and repaint. That's what I do for a living. So for the Ketchco stuff, if it's all Ketchco, then it's the, the exact same blanks that I can get myself from overseas and repaint. That's all. That's, that's where my head's at with that. I don't know how you feel about it. If you love it, you hate it. Um, I'm not slamming them by any means. I think that they're a phenomenal com company, and they, they definitely put out a great mystery box every single month. Um, if, if you're not a painter, they're great. For the angler, they're phenomenal. You can't beat it. It's a great price for as much stuff as you get because it's not all just hard baits. You get a bunch of other stuff as well. So, again, not slamming them. I just, for me, I couldn't justify spending the money um, when I've got so many other things that I have to get on a monthly basis and, and blanks being one of them. So, I did suspend my subscription, but I still love Mystery Tackle Box nonetheless. But this is a Max Lure. Came out of the Mystery Tackle Box in uh, either May or June. And it's that Lucky Craft pressing uh, that we all have in 1.5 with that real thin bill. So you guys are some of the best subscribers out there in the land. Thank you so much. You guys are always interactive on this channel. You always, when I ask you for something, you go above and beyond to, to try and take care of me and, and I try and do the same back. So I asked for some questions and answers. What questions did you want me to try and answer the next time I had a workshop update? Now is the time to answer those questions. Wow, um, so I'm probably going to have to break this into a two-part segment. I'm going to do as many as I can on this video, but we are running long already because I want to let you kind of in on what's going on in the shop and why I've been absent, not uploading this frequently. But as far as the in-video comments, I want to go ahead and try and knock those out in this video. And I'm going to flash those up on the screen for you guys. Um, we are loaded, ready to rock and roll, and let's get to it. So there's, um, there's a couple of, of um, commentators on here that are always really good to, to chime in and give comments or ask questions. Ray Willett is one of them, and he doesn't have a question, but I do want to give him a shout-out because he always makes comments. He says that he loves the warts on the opening shot, and I appreciate that. He also likes the IU. It is a cool color. It's, it's a color that a lot of big box companies do, but I think I do it a little bit differently because I'd like to throw in a splash of green in the gill plates and just a little bit of pink on the belly instead of that orange that everybody puts on there, that blush orange. I like a, a little bit of a, just kind of flip the script on it. So thank you for noticing and uh, I appreciate the comments. Let's see, we got Paddle, Paddle Nice. I hope that, or Pad, Pad Nice. Pad Nice? I really hope that I did not mispronounce your name, but it's a really cool name. I just wish I were doing it justice. I hope that I haven't paddle niece. P A D D E L N I S S E. Okay, paddle niece. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna. It's, it's gonna be my conundrum for the rest of the video. Um, says that I am incredible to paint. I don't know if he's painting pictures of me. Um, thank you. I, I'm guessing that you mean that I do well with an airbrush. I'm learning. I learn every single day, and. Um, every experience that I have with you guys gives me different ideas and it helps me and in turn I want to help you guys back so that's the way the community works on this channel and thank you very much for your comment the first question question comes from Theodore McClanahan who says for your QA what's your dream fishing destination or dream fish to target 
Wow. So if it's a fish that I haven't caught yet, that I'd like to, a fish on the bucket list, I have yet to catch a sailfish. Um, you see a lot of people, oh, I want to go catch a GT or I want to catch, you know, I, yes, I would love to, but not me. I've been on a boat where my bestie Dave and uh, Harrison, those two guys I'm going to be salmon fishing with here in a little bit, uh, the next few weeks or so, but it was um, Dave, it was his engagement gift from Harrison to um, to Dave and Dana, so we were out on uh, on the family charter boat, which was really cool. And I watched a, a sailfish be caught, and it was a white marlin. So I guess my dream fish would definitely be a sailfish. Preferably, I'd like to catch a blue marlin, a great big blue marlin. Uh, love to watch them dance and jump, tail walk, and all that good stuff. If we're talking about fish that I have caught that I love catching, that's my favorite favorite, it's got to be salmon. It's got to be. They're huge. They're massive animals. They're tasty, but they're just such majestic creatures. I've caught them on the East Coast, but a destination that I would love to go would be um, would definitely be Alaska. And the wilds, the wilderness, the, the beautiful gin clear green, emerald green waters up in Alaska, for sure. Um, hopefully that'll happen shorter than later. But thank you for the question. I appreciate it, Theodore. And hey, just a quick um, side note here. Yes, I have your musky baits. I'm stoked about doing it. Realistically, since you told me it's no big hurry, it's probably going to get done when I get back from this epic adventure. So thanks for your patience. Great questions. Thanks for being a part of the channel. Next question comes from Rocco, 112 Camaro. Kick-ass name. Love it. Since it's football season and you're in Razorback country, will you do a crankbait in a Razorback pattern? If so, how much will they go for? So normally, and I did answer you, and I, I see that you've answered me back, and I hadn't looked at that yet, but I, just to clarify, I've done some stuff that's Kansas City Chiefs, but I got express written permission uh, from the establishment to do it and that's like a one-off it was uh, a special gift for a special person that's involved with them um, so I was real happy to do that but you have to have written permission to do any kind of reproduction of let's say like the Georgia Bulldogs logo or in any logo Steelers professional sports you, re you really have to have your P's and Q's in order and you can't sell them really basically you can you know anyways because they want to cut and it's their college or professional team and i could lose my license so if you guys are out there doing that don't do it that's just my little unless you're allowed to do it but that's not what he meant um he said wasn't thinking you a razorback thinking generic red boar with an attitude which is awesome or something like a quarry cat aquarium fish they look compacted uh look like compacted catfish but with a hog appearance <laughs> so you don't get sued absolutely um and yeah you know what rocco i um i had the benefit of as a young lady um this was way 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 before any before i was married anything i got to work in the coolest aquarium uh was it like a mom and pop store actually well no they had like four stores i think but it was local it was like a district level area um and I got familiar with brackish, saltwater, freshwater, a lot of really cool, you know, so you can see the obsession with me and fish goes way back um, in all aspects of it. So yeah, I knew what a quarry cat was, but yeah, I'd be down. I'd totally be down doing something like that. So look for it in an upcoming video. Brian asked, Brian is also a, a normal commentator on the channel. Thank you so much for all the interaction you put out. Brian wants to know info on how postage is handled, how I handle it, and incorporated in the purchase, and do you do all the printing and shipping on a scale, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so here's the basics, the meat and potato of shipping. A lot of things that people forget is that even though we have to charge for shipping, we get charged a certain rate, and a lot of people are like, oh, you're charging more than than the you know than it would normally be, blah, 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 but that's not actually the case. So you got to remember, we got to pay for the packaging that we ship it out in, we got to put it in boxes or it, you, I'm starting to go with uh, the green option, which is sustainable packaging. So that costs money as well. Um, this, the stamps or the postage, all of my postage runs through Pitney Bowles. And then I also have a UPS account, so which I have to pay for. I have to pay for all of that. Um, the Pitney Bowles account is through my PayPal business account. 
Um, and because they're a mega company, I do get a little bit of a reduced rate, but really it's not that much. The only difference, the way I've worked it out on, on paper, is that I'm printing it from my own paper. So it's just a little bit less expensive than it would be from the post office, but that's because I'm not using the post office ink. So you got to remember that the paper, the labels, the printer ink, all of the stuff that's used to print out stuff, and then the boxes that it goes in, uh, that's all a part that has to be factored into shipping. So because they on normally from two to four ounces we get charged like two well it used to be a straight rate but now it's dependent on um on where you live in the world so if i'm shipping from here to little rock arkansas it's probably within two days or missouri so that's usually around two dollars and 78 cents and then the further out i have to ship the longer the more the more they charge so but then on top of that, you got to remember that it's all the packaging and stuff that I have to purchase to ship stuff out. So that's the meat and potatoes of it. Um, let me see if there's anything that I missed in your question. Oh, you asked about the scale too. So as far as the scale is concerned, yeah, I use a little tabletop scale that's uh, normally used in the kitchen for cooking and weighing foods and measuring stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I weigh out everything to make sure it matches with what I'm saying it is in, uh, in the postage because everything is done by weight. So thank you for the question, Brian. On to the next question. Bad Fish Rising Last says, those reduced shadling baits for so, oh, so, so next level. I thought it was a question. Awesome job. Love custom stuff, and you just customized custom. Thank you. That's a very cool comment. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Archer, let's see, lots of questions from you. Mr. Archer Zero, great depth in the paint. Please fish, oh, please fish some of your baits. Yeah, I, you know, I do when I get a chance, but to be honest, they're going out the door so quick that I normally don't even keep much of what I have. I, I normally do not have the luxury of keeping the baits for myself, and I should do that more often. Uh, I did that with a wake shad, one of the, um, the Strike King Blank wake shads. Th those are fun. Uh, I do when I can, so I, I promise I'll try and make an effort in the fishing videos to fish more of my stuff. I normally just hand them over to my pro staff and say, go get them, go test them, and uh, then they end up using them in tournaments. Have you ever done a joint YouTube collab with another YouTuber? I would truly flip out if you and Marlon Bla Marlin Bates did a collab. I love Marlon Bates. Man, he's the coolest dude ever. He's funny. He makes me laugh every time I watch him. I do have him um, as one of my, you know, you can put like who you recommend that we watch or who I watch and, you know, the community. So he's in there. Um, of course, Michael's in there. Uh, Marlon would be a hoot. He would be an absolute blast to do a collab with. I think he's in Iowa. I'm down here in Arkansas. But if there ever were a person that I would want to do a collab with, it would probably be like him. Uh, Michael Ornstein would be a hoot as well. And I think Tim Galati up in New York would be awesome. That would be a fun collab to do. Uh, who knows? I might end up seeing Tim in the next three weeks. What's the smallest, largest baits you've painted? Mailbox doesn't count. No, I guess it doesn't. Um, Dirk Fackwax mailbox was fun to paint, but no, the I think the biggest is probably some of the musky baits that I've been doing. Um, I've got a Livingston jointed bait that's oh god, I just it's in my little paws right now. It's the B Viper Eight, and this thing is a monster. I think head to tail, it's like ten inches. It's just, it's just a monster of a bait. So that's probably 10 uh, foot long. The, there's a huge version of the Whopper Plopper that River to Sea puts out. I think it's like it's a 200 or two third. The thing's a monster. I mean, it's just massive. Um, painted those before. The real estate on the paint uh, or on the bait just kind of gives us the opportunity to be more creative with what kind of patterns we're putting on there. I, I can go crazy. I would love to. So it doesn't matter. She, uh, another person has asked me, what the, do I charge by the inch on the baits? Nah. nah it, the, the biggest thing is how long the prep time is going to be for me. So if I, have to, um, if I have to prep stuff, like tape off a lot of stuff, or if it's jointed, if it's got uh, metal parts that have to be unscrewed, like some of these stuff, some of the stuff that I have, that takes a little bit more. So usually the prices on the website are geared toward the bass fishing community the special orders and the musky baits are uh, a bit more expensive 
So I hope that answered that question. Um, always much love and best of luck. You as well, Mr. Archer. Much appreciation. All right, moving right along. The next question is a good one. Um, real good question from Todd Hamilton. They're all good questions, but this is a cool, this is like a, a painting specific question. Hey, Jen, I occasionally get a small bump, like a glob of paint maybe in my base coat. Usually really tiny, but noticeable. Yeah, sometimes when, you know, if, if it doesn't jam your airbrush up, and it happens to me too, uh, it'll shoot through the airbrush and it'll just plop out onto the bait. It just sucks. Um, it's a pain in the butt. Should I try and remove them while the paint's wet or wait and sand it when it's dry or not even worry about it? Thanks for sharing your insights and teaching us what you've learned or learning. So for me, if you can get away with masking it over with a dark color, let's say if you're doing a craw and you can figure out a way to put part of the craw pattern stencil to, with a dark color to try and mask over it, maybe do that. While the paint's wet, if you have a, a little tiny pair of tweezers, um, you might want to try. I, I do that from time to time. Or sometimes I just hose down the whole bait with water and start over again. Depend, it depends on how big the glob is that's on the side of the bait and if you can get away with masking it if you don't think that it's going to be noticeable i'd probably just let it slide uh i've done that in the past where as long as it's not just popping up off the bait to where it's going to be like wow that looks horrible if it's a if it's enough to to notice then absolutely try and get rid of it i, I wouldn't wait to sand i wouldn't wait till it's dry for sure because you're going to end up potentially taking off extra paint that you don't want i would just uh, grab tweezers try and get it off as gently as you can and then spray over it and then in the meantime todd clean your airbrush well you guys these are great questions um the next question is from timothy consani or consani I, I hope that i'm not butchering that name either I, I really i'm not trying to butcher names i'm usually pretty good with pronunciation but occasionally i do stumble uh, he writes, gotta love videos and your openness to helping people with the craft. Thank you. I see a lot of patterns. I definitely want to try learning a lot, but I have a question. You did a video where you were using an app to figure out a color on a plastic worm. For the life of me, I can't find the video or find the app. Looking forward to future videos. Can't wait to start painting and a few of these patterns to make... Oh, there's more. Hang on a second. I gotta open that up. Apologies. Um to make my neighbor who's my competition locally a little jelly. Thanks again. Um, oh, don't compete with your neighbor. We're all a community here. Uh, we're, we're all custom airbrush painters and, and we all gotta stick together. Um, and I, I know you're just joking. So in regards to the question, it's the Color Hack app. I did respond to you um, and I linked the video. I'm fairly certain, yes, I did. It's called Shop Talk at the JB Co Garage, Green Pumpkin and the Color App Hack. So, on that note, there are still some issues with a lot of folks that are just not able to achieve the results they should be achieving with that. So, I'm wondering if I shouldn't just revisit and spend an entire video on that color hack app. Because um, I'm, I'm wondering, that, you know, gears are turning in my head as I'm answering this question as to whether or not um, transparent paints and pearl paints and basically I'm using here's what I'm using to achieve the results I'm doing it exactly like the app says which is the app is called color mixer and it's available on both uh, Android and smartphone iPhone so it's available both and it's called the same thing on both of them but there's there's a I think maybe a difference between opaque paints and transparent paints although there shouldn't be um, because usually if these because these these paint apps are generally meant for the house painting community not the artistry community so you're, you're dealing with thick paints there so I really just need to see where the where the disconnect is happening so I, I, I am I'm answering my own question as we go we're definitely going to spend some time revisiting that color app because I do achieve the results I would say 98 percent of the time I've been getting exactly what they say now the one difference that you might want to think about is that if it's if it's not turning completely black on you and you're not using too much black or even if you are and you're not getting the exact results 
our screens on our computers and also on our smartphones are different so they might not be picking up the exact true color that you're looking for that could be part of it but again I think that's something that we need to revisit so thank you for that question Ray had a final question on this last uh, part of the comment section he said what do you call the color of the yellowish green wiggle wart with blue on the bill that's my gold goblin I left you a link on where you could find it and if you look at the actual color of the yellowish green it's just a slight variation from chartreuse it's got a little more goldenrod in it than it does the shark the bright glaring chartreuse although chartreuse would work on that bait but that's my gold goblin you can find it at um, jekyllbaits.com under the ozark warts the third group of them there's like maybe five or six groups of warts on there now but um, that's we've run way 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 over but it's always good answering you guys' questions there is a whole nother section of questions in the community that I was not able to get to on this I wholeheartedly apologize we're gonna split this into a second video so the next shop update we're gonna answer the rest of the questions that we didn't get to in the meantime if you have more questions that I didn't get to today and you haven't already asked a question on the community aspect of YouTube or you haven't sent me a message by all means I'll do my best to get it in one of the videos down the road I hope you guys have a fantastic day thanks for hanging out with Jekyll Bates at the Jekyll Bait workshop we'll see you on the next one with a brand new computer Woo! see ya oh so it is the next day uh, this should have happened yesterday I apologize because I really wanted to get this video out so you guys could see the egg okay so that didn't happen but um, we do have the new laptop set up. I'm really stoked about that. Rascal, do you have anything that you want to say, buddy? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I appreciate everybody for hanging out on the channel. And thanks for your patience. And I guess we'll see you later because, um, yeah, bye.